Hi, my name is David Pike, the Connect Geek, and welcome to the latest in our series of Ask the Expert videos. Today, we're going to take a look at the topic of RF connectors and specifically precision RF connectors. And to help me today, joining me from Vert Electronic is Remco, Remco van der Greent. Um, Remco, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, uh, David, from my side. Um... Yeah, I'm Remco van der Rijnt, what you already told. I'm a field application engineer uh, for Root Electronic, uh, especially for the region at this moment for the Benelux. Um, at this moment, I'm already seven years a field application engineer. I'm also more uh, related to the RF part, so that's that's really a good way to, to, to start this discussion about precision RF connectors on the way. Fantastic. Well, that leads us straight into the first question, which is why do we need precision RF connectors and what does precision mean? Yeah, precision means and especially precision RF connectors is always a hard part because a lot of customers are using it in different different ways, sometimes from DC current up to, to higher frequencies. But precision hard, RF connectors, in, in my opinion, and our opinion from with electronic is that you have RF connectors that can handle frequencies, what we are telling in our data sheets, for instance, on a good way that you have as low as losses as possible. And I think that's the way how you can describe it. On that. So that's our opinion. So yeah, and especially what you're saying, uh, frequencies, it's depending on a lot of things. So when we're talking about these frequencies and we're talking about high frequencies, what do we mean in terms of high frequency? Yeah, uh, high frequency, of course, is always uh, the discussion. Uh, in our portfolio at this moment, we can go up to 18 gigahertz, um, especially the SMA and the SMP. Are the, the, the two both versions can go up 18 gigahertz for the most application for the industrial way. That's, yeah, I think the highest you, you, you need at this moment. Of course, in the future can 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 change that. But that is really okay, 80 gigahertz. But we start at up to 4 gigahertz for the SMB. Um, our UMRF is up, up to 6 gigahertz, like the, the MMCX and MMCX, so something like that. So it's, it's always, and, and that frequency is depending on a lot of the uh, things in your circuit, in your system. Okay. And RF connectors, coaxial connectors, have mm -hmm. been familiar for a long time. Mm -hmm. So what is it that makes these connectors different? So precision RF connectors are, are definitely a step up from the ordinary. What is it that makes these connectors different? Is it a construction thing? Is it a materials thing? How are they made? Um, yeah, that's a good good question because that's a really important thing you need to consider uh, because you see, for instance, in the SMA and the connector world, you see a lot of variations also in frequencies. Also in our portfolio, you see uh, in the SMA connectors different because we can go up now up to, I said 18 gigahertz, but it's up to, now we got just a new introduction for 27 gigahertz. It's a solderless version. So without soldering, you can go up to, to 27 gigahertz. Um, but if you go for soldering versions, then you go 18 gigahertz. And the difference there is is that your, um, how must it say, the build up of your connector is really important because sometimes you see if you have an angled connector that uh, the, the center contact, so the signal pin, uh, is an hour side um, from one piece of contact. And sometimes you see that two pins are connected to each other by soldering or something like that. And then that angle part, then you could, could have a lot of reflection. So you go to a lower version of um, frequencies. That's one part. But also the thickness of your plating is really important. Uh, the coaxial connectors mostly are gold plated. So really a lot of bling bling and that sort of things. Um, and then gold plating, the thickness of the gold plating is really important because the thicker it is, the better your skin effect is on that way, and so the higher the frequency you can go. Also in our portfolio, we have, for instance, uh, gold plating that go up to 27 gigahertz then, but also up to 6 gigahertz. And that's the the, the, the plating is there 10 times lower with that 6, 6 gigahertz. That's also a thing, but also the... Um, the ratio between the dimension of the center contact and the ratio 
between the inner side of the connector itself with the PTFE uh, isolation that also makes sure that everything is on 50 ohms impedance. And that's, of course, with coaxial, a really important one that your impedance is overall over your whole connector or over your cable. It's really important to get that straight 50 ohms. If that's not, then you can have a lot of troubles there with the reflection. And especially with the S11 parameters and that sort of things. And that's a particular problem when you're going back to the, the right angle connector that we talked about. Yeah. Um, I saw some of the diagrams that you sent across for me when we were preparing for this call. So the construction of a right angle connector, that the internal dimensions are critical to get that impedance right, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. Especially in that angle part, especially on that edge, uh, you see that um, some again some some people or some manufacturers are doing soldering and directly uh, at the edge also a ptfe but at that point you must also do some impedance matching so sometimes you see that we we, we are not the only one but uh, a couple of other manufacturers also are doing that you have cut out a little bit ptfe at, the, at that edge with uh, there are some small areas that you know for sure that that error makes sure that the impedance is really on the 50 ohms also on that bended edge. And that's the most thing you need to, need to take in consideration. So that's, okay. uh, in our point of view, really a good one. Okay. I'm going to go back to something you mentioned uh, just a couple of moments ago. You talked about skin effect and you talked about the importance of the gold plating around mm -hmm. the contact. So mm -hmm. without going into too much science, what is skin effect and why is it important in a in high frequency connector? Yeah, I always compare skin effect and RF with a washing machine. Uh, if you look into the uh, to the to the drum, the washing drum for your washing machine, you get a high centrifuge uh, um, speed or a rotation per minute and that sort of things. For instance, if you take uh, 800 rotation per minute instead of uh, 1400 rotation per minute, with 1400 rotation per minute, you see more that the wash is pushed outside to your washing drum. And that's also what you're doing with, with frequencies. If you take frequencies, the higher the frequency is, the more uh, the signal is going to the outside of the connector. And if you have a thicker plating on your connector itself, you have more space there to guide the signal with lower impedance and lower resistance. So you can see it like that. So it's more guidance. So if you have a, a thinner plating, then that guidance is less, and that's why you see that the specification for uh, thinner plating is lower in frequency than a thicker plating. Okay, um, and that's not to say that the material, the the, so the contact material, isn't important. The difference between things like beryllium copper and phosphor bronze that becomes important as well. Yeah, especially for the center contact for the female contact you see it, that's really important one that's that's a good uh, thing you stay, uh, picked out on that way because if you're looking to phosphor bronze and to beryllium copper that has um they are both flexible so that's why they are using it for flexible contacts um but beryllium copper is over the years can handle better also higher temperatures and the tensile strength will will be almost remain the same at the start as at over 10 years for instance you have a, a couple of percents uh, difference there with beryllium uh, with uh, phosphor bronze for instance you see there there is a, a de degradation of your tensile strength around 40 to 50 percent with uh, over the years and that's that's a difference between um, 20 degrees up to 85 degrees for instance over 10 years you see really a big difference in tensile strength and that's why the center contact choose of your materials also really important that's that's really interesting because i always i'm always interested in the in the mechanical properties of connectors and why materials matter when we're talking mm -hmm. about a connector that's, that's delivering a higher performance yeah um, so we talked about high quality materials and advanced construction so these play a a, a vital role in RF connector designer, and when we're talking about these precision RF connectors, obviously it becomes that much more important. Yeah. And you've talked about connectors that will last a long time. So mm -hmm. what is driving the market at the moment for these precision RF connectors? Um, 
Yeah, the, 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 you're meaning the applications, what what, what ap typical yeah. applications could be. Yeah, that's always a hard one because you see coaxial connectors in a long, uh, a lot of different applications. But at this moment, you see really, of course, IoT is coming up and that sort of things. Bluetooth is coming up, uh, Zigbee uh, applications. That's a particular applications can a coaxial connector can be used because Especially in the industrial way, you see a lot of uh, applications or PCBs are built up in a metal housing, and metal housing with an internal connector or an internal antenna is not always um, not always that easy to connect onto the outside world, and that's why you need an external antenna. And then a lot of uh, people are using uh, coaxial cables and coaxial connectors for that to, to make sure that the um, the connector goes outside the housing, and you can, yeah, you can apply there uh, an external antenna for the right frequency, of course. So, if you have a good connector with the right um, with the right frequencies, with the right materials, and that sort of things, you make sure that your power uh, loss is as loss, uh, low as possible to go outside. And that's the most important thing, especially for the industrial world. We see the range must be more and more higher on that. One. Yes, um, and we've been talking here at Design Spark. We've talked a lot about antennas over the last few months, um, mm -hmm. and the fact that every antenna that that gets mounted onto the inside or the outside of a device needs a connection, needs a, a physical electrical connection, uh, and that's always important to remember. So, for those high performance antenna, we need a high performance connector. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that high performance connector is th that's always a combination with RF signals. Uh, the, the copper trays, the the, the 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 design of the copper trays, the design of the layout, the connector, and then the antenna. That must be really fitted to each other. That's why we also call it sometimes a matching of the impedance, of course. Um, besides that, we already talked about uh, talked about materials. Sometimes you see uh, connectors that are based on die casting uh, uh, production systems. We are doing it with CNC machining and that sort of things. The CNC is much more easy because then your connectors from one point of view over one piece of metal, one piece of brass, for instance, and that's much more easy to, to make sure that the matching is okay for the system. So it's really matched on 50 ohms besides all the other things we already discussed. So that the dimensions, the actual dimensions of the connector are just as important as the materials that we use uh, to, to ensure this kind of performance. Is that right? That's right. Uh, you see with a lot of connector series that, that, that it's also mentioned in standards. For instance, SMA standard, the SMA, uh, there is a mil spec standard behind. And that mil spec standard is coming out of the history of the SMA connector because it was designed for military applications to send out or signals to the other side of the world and that sort of things. Uh, and that's why uh, there was a mil standard behind with all the dimensions. Besides, of course, there are some tolerations. But also with the materials you can use, but how it's built up, like with what I already told with CNC machining or die casting, that's up to the manufacturer what you want to do with it. But all the outside, um, the threat, the dimension, that sort of thing, that's and the dimension of the center contact, that's really in the standard. So that's really a good one, I think, for everybody. So that you also can do some interchangeability between manufacturers, of course, be aware of all the frequencies everybody is mentioning there. Of course, it's better to use one one manufacturer for all, for the mating parts, but sometimes that is not possible, then you can go ahead with other ones. Okay. And so when a designer is looking for a precision RF connector, we're talking specifically about SMA type, type products, which are everywhere on antenna and RF signal chains, mm -hmm. What are the key things? Let's summarize the key things that designers need to be aware of when they're choosing the right connector. What are the things that you would highlight as being the most important when they're finding the connector for their application? Yeah, there are a lot of key things you need to consider. One key thing is, of course, which frequency you want to transport. If, uh, if for instance, Bluetooth, you want to go for 2.4 gigahertz or something like that. 
Um, but that's really a good question because sometimes you need also to take in consideration that you want to transport some, some harmonics of the base frequency, the fundamental frequency. For instance, if you have 2.4 gigahertz and you want to go for your third harmonic or something like that, then you need to take in consideration that also the third harmonic, the 7.2 gigahertz, must be transported. Um, and that's not always what everybody keeps on mind. So that's one thing. Be aware what you want to transport and maybe also the harmonics you want to transport or not. So that's why it's really important to make the right choice in, um, in your frequency. That's one point. Take in consideration which environment you have. Uh, again, if you're going a higher temperature environment, check if your center contact is my point of view, it's better to use terrarium copper because what we already told about the tensile strength um, change over the years. So uh, when the tensile strength is not okay, of course the, the, the contact force between the center contact and the out and the, from the male and the female is not okay anymore. Then you get also more reflections. So also uh, loss in power on that way. That's one what you must keep in mind. So the environmental um, or the amb amb ambient temperature for something like that. That's one thing, um, and always check what transport you need, especially for higher frequencies. And what is higher frequency? In our point of view, it's higher than six gigahertz. Um, you have several build-ups. For instance, if you look into the SMA, you have the angled version, but you have also end lounge or end uh, edge mounted versions. And then the, the center contact is in line with your PCB uh, layout in that way, so you get less losses there. So that's better to do it and it's easier to make your PCB layout if you, uh, uh, if everybody uh, yeah, is doing that because when the angled version get less losses you must make more matching on your PCB layout so that's a good thing in that way. Okay. Um, that's what you need to take consideration in my point of view and again with all the frequency check if your plating thickness is okay because of the skin effect. Sometimes manufacturers are, are saying it's um, for instance, uh, you can go up to, uh, for instance, 18 gigahertz, but then you see the laser thing is still pretty thin on that way. So that's that's a good one. Fantastic. So from my point of view, RF connectors are something I've been familiar with, and I think many of us are familiar with and have been for a long time. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about these really high frequencies, I think Remco has given us some fantastic tips and insights into some of the things that you need to be aware of when choosing the connector we've talked about the things you've got to be aware of the idea that an edge launch connector might be prefer uh, preferable to a right angle because of the problems of impedance matching within a right angle connector i think it's also important to to reiterate what, what remco said earlier that when we're talking about the impedance of an rf sigma chain every element counts it's not just the cable that could be 50 ohms, the connector needs to maintain that impedance throughout the signal chain to make sure that you get the best possible transmission with the lowest possible losses. And uh, Remco's given us the, the clearest description of skin effect that I've ever heard in 30 something years. That's something that I'm always gonna remember. And I think it's, it's something that a lot of us probably overlook. So the fact that, that Remco was able to give us that insight into to how the signals work at higher frequencies is going to be, I think, a real eye opener for, for many of us. If you need to learn more about the Verth connectors that RS have in the range, please go to, to the RS website and search on the, the RF connectors from Verth. Uh, we'll put some more information on Design Spark so that you'll be able to see a little bit more about the design and uh, capabilities of these things and some of the little features that make these connectors a little bit better just the higher performance for those higher frequencies when you really need it please come back and take a look at the information we have please come back and watch our next ask the expert video remco thank you so much for joining us uh, no no problem uh, you're always welcome it's great great to to do this sort of uh, technical insight of a lot of things so uh, i was happy to to join this uh, this conversation thanks fantastic Brilliant. Remco, thank you very much. And to you, the audience, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. See you. Bye bye.